one and all, uh, hello, welcome, yes, thank you, thank you, to another episode of uh, Crimson Tower, episode two, in which we will be constructing the first ride, finally, a hybrid wood and steel coaster, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Probably. I mean, I was very happy with how it came out, and it could well be my favourite coaster I've ever built in this game to date, aside from possibly some of the other rides we'll be building later on in this series, of course, so, you know, I hope you enjoy this video. Now, some of you may be wondering, Matt, you sly, jargon-spewing savant, what in the blazes do you mean this is a hybrid wood and steel coaster? Well, I'm glad you asked that, random viewer, just in case you couldn't tell from the from the video what a hybrid wood and steel coaster might be. Um, in Planet Coaster, and I suppose while we're at it in real life as well, a hybrid roller coaster is a type of ride that has a mixture of wood and steel used in its construction, uh, usually consisting of wooden supports combined with a modern steel track. Although I'm told that the, the vice versa of that situation does exist, although I, my Google foo couldn't turn up much, so maybe you guys in the comments can help me out there. Now when it comes to Planet Coaster, there are two kinds of hybrid coaster, the Iron Fury kind, which is what you see me building in this here video, uh, and Malice Unchained, which is um, the other kind, I suppose. For all intents and purposes, the two are functionally identical in the game, and the only real difference is the car design, and I went with Iron Fury because I liked the hot rod style flamey carriages. However, the two coaster types are different. The Iron Fury, the one in this video, <laughs> has a track that consists of a stack of laminated wooden beams topped off with a steel plate for the car to sit on, um, so kind of like a traditional wooden coaster almost, whereas the Malice Unchained track has a more conventional fully steel track just sitting on top of some wooden supports. Therefore, uh, rides built uh, to the like of the Iron Fury variant in real life uh, often get classified strictly as just wooden roller coasters, like, you know, uh, theme park awards, roller coaster awards. They often call these just wooden roller coasters, whereas those built to the specification of the Malice Unchained type are often classified as just steel coasters in various coaster classifications and award categories. Although, that being said, both are often classified just as hybrid coasters like they are in Planet Coaster. And as I said before, as far as the game cons as far as the game is concerned, the two are functionally identical. I mean there might be subtle differences in the physics I haven't checked. I know the two hyper coasters are virtually identical, bar like a very, very slight physics tweak to the point where it's not, you know, it doesn't make any difference in day to day playing. Um, you, but yes, I'm just going off on a tangent, going off on the fact that these two coasters are the same. I kind of wish Planet Coaster would implement a roller coaster tycoon style train switcher so you can change the car, the car type of a ride. In addition to this, you could have just the one hybrid coaster type and have a button that switches to the different kind of track you want, saving space on the menus. Now I know that custom cars are coming in the update that comes out uh, today, actually. <laughs> Look at that. Um, when this video comes out. But I suppose uh, a track switcher would have been a good idea for the hybrids as well. I mean, it's not a huge deal to me, to be honest. Uh, it's more of a thought as to how I probably would have built the game if, it, if I were on the dev team. Uh, what else would I have implemented if I was on the dev, dev team? Well, I definitely would have implemented some sort of golden statue of my face that players can place anywhere in their park. And, of course, I would add a simple way to construct the agricultural equipment for the easy facilitation of tomato farming. But I think a few, <laughs> but I think a few other things like having cars and buses when you're building car parks, uh, elevators would be a big one, particularly for this park uh, when we eventually build the Crimson Tower that the name, the park derives its name from. Uh, swimming pools would be nice as well, and a universal grid, please, that would be fantastic. And maybe have an actually functional path building tool while we're at it as well, um, which would include a tangible way of building plazas that don't feel exploitative or cheaty and always end up looking garbage anyway. And I guess just more coaster types, which are being added slowly anyway, so I guess this is just a case of waiting. I would kind of like to have the Twister coaster come back from RCT3. I mean, it would literally just be a clone of the flawless coaster in Planet Coaster, but it would have different types of cars. Um, but then that brings me back around to the question of why we can't have, you know, different car switching in the first place, or at least why is it taking so long to implement it? Hmm. I suppose I'd just like ver I'd like more versatility for all the rides. It all boils down to the hyper coasters should be able to invert when banking at high speed, like they do in real life, for one thing. And having a different car and track options would be nice, though this is at least being partially addressed in the anniversary update. Like I say, as I mentioned, for rides that are functionally identical, such as the two hyper coasters and hybrid coasters, there should just be a button that lets players switch the track switch the track types. Sorry, I stumbled on my words there. <laughs> I know there are very, very minor differences, like I said, uh, there are very, very minor differences in the physics of the two hyper coasters, but these are so small, I doubt it would actually affect the way the ride worked, and, 
you know the best the best way to the best way I can see of implementing this is to just bring back the extended coaster and roller coaster tycoon 3's world wild expansion <laughs> not roller coaster tycoon world bloody hell uh, but the extended coaster in uh, roller coaster tycoon 3 wild uh, that ride literally had every single kind of car in the game from stand up to lap bars to flawless cars etc etc so you could build a hyper coaster but the, you could still invert it for doing big inversions and things big uh, you know banked turns and things and you know depending on the car you used in that ride um it would end up altering the physics slightly for example uh, the lighter cars could get to higher speeds and you know climb higher hills uh, and another example is the twister cars were the only ones that could take advantage of the launch to lift hill feature all the others just kind of used it as a sort of drive motor just very slowly i guess they would pick up speed eventually but it was very very slow whereas the twister cars would just zoom off um because they were designed to work with that feature so you, you it doesn't necessarily matter if the physics change because it's been done before in a frontier game <laughs> anyway i feel like i am getting a little bit sidetracked here was that a pun sidetracked i'm calling that a pun <laughs> but i feel like if i just focus this entire commentary on the footage it'll get old fast i mean i'm literally just building a roller coaster track so i feel like you guys you know you guys are all pretty smart i mean you subscribe to me after all and that alone I think that makes you a certified genius, I'm sure. So I get the impression that you can figure out what it is I'm doing just from looking at the screen. Although, I suppose I could just justify some of the choices I'm making here. Um, I have finished the main ride now. I'm building the maintenance shed. It's purely cosmetic. It just makes the feel the theme park feel a little bit more, you know, authentic to have the side track there that has the maintenance shed where we could potentially uh, have a car as backup in case one of the other cars fails or if the park's on a lighter day, we could just be running one car to save costs. Just nice to have that little shed there, purely cosmetic. But when it came to actually designing the track, which, like I say, is largely done now, um, some of you kind of might have noticed that I used a lot of uh, the pre-built elements. So, uh, unlike a lot of Planet Coaster YouTubers, <laughs> I say it like I'm one of them and not the sham I am, but unlike many of them, I don't tend to make my own inversions and features. I tend to just use the pre-built elements and link them together with track pieces. Like I use a pre-built loop, then do some, make my own sort of curve that leads into a pre-built corkscrew, etc., etc. The reason for this uh, is down to what I feel is the biggest weakness of Planet Coaster and one that is yet to really be even directly addressed. Um, well, I guess it has been kind of addressed. I'll get onto that in just a second. Uh, it is impossible to make smooth roller coasters. There is no continuous roll feature, so every piece you place has this very noticeable join to it. You know, just if you go down a water slide in real life, you can kind of feel that bump where all the pieces join together. It kind of feels like that when you're riding a ride in Planet Coaster. And it is just extremely evident where each of the pieces join together when you're riding the ride. Um, you can get around this, but it takes a very, very long time, and it does feel kind of exploitative and cheaty and not really you know, how the devs intended you to play the game. So it'd be nice if kind of the way it was built from the ground up would, would just make smooth smooth rides by default. Like I say, they have ad adjusted the whole problem of not having a heart line a little bit by adding the banking offset, offset tool when you're building tracks, but it's still, it's not really enough. The rides just don't feel smooth. Now, the issue of, you know, not having no continuous roll and it being very, very hard, if not impossible, to make certain inversions. It's not a huge problem when it comes to basic turns and climbs and drops, but like I say, when you're building complicated inversions, rolls and loops, there is virtually no reliable methods to make smooth elements with a consistent consistent heart line. The only method I'm familiar with was is the one where you just use the shortest pieces and build it very slowly and then smooth it over eight times, kind of piece by piece. It takes a very, very long time to do that, though. Um... However, the pre-built pieces, on the other hand, are all perfectly smooth and properly hard-lined, so that's why I just choose to go with them. Not necessarily because I'm lazy and it's far easier to use the pre-builts, although I, I would be lying if I said that wasn't at least partially true to an extent. But it's more to do with the fact that the roller coasters just don't feel smooth unless you use pre-built pieces, and I never really feel satisfied with how they end up feeling unless I use the pre-built elements. And certain pre-built elements, such as the uh, the non-inverted loop, you know, the one that kind of does a barrel roll at the peak of the loop, so you never go upside down. And the uh, the double loop, the one from G-Force, you know, the one where it's a big loop, and then there's another top hat that goes over the loop in the same piece. It's very hard to do that without using the pre-built part either. Uh, and this isn't just coming from hacks like me. Uh, pros like Silver Rat said this as well, that he tried doing that and he, he couldn't do it unless you used the pre-built part. So, so yeah. Now, this isn't always going to be the case for Crimson Lake. 
Crimson Tower. That's the name of this. That's the name of that's. I didn't forget the name of my series. Uh, it's not always going to be the case for rides I build in this in this park. In fact, the next coaster I'll be building in this series will use none of the pre-built elements, and one of the rides we'll be making will even feature a custom inversion set piece, a real tour de force of an inversion, if you will. But by and large, when it comes to loops and rolls, like I say, I tend to just use the stuff provided in game for the sake of having a smoother and ultimately more satisfying feeling ride. So that's kind of, you know, that's my general approach to constructing tracks and things. But I'm getting ahead of, I, well, I'm not getting ahead of myself. What's the word I need? I'm getting behind myself, getting behind the times. That was a, that was a very long time in the distant past. In fact, we've, we've built the surface shed. I've built that kind of uh, transfer track area you can't it would be nice i guess one day if planet coaster could add some sort of you know transfer track feature uh maybe i mean would a maintenance shed i I, I don't really know how they would i guess i can think of how they would uh implement it but i don't know how deep into the game's function it would be how easy it would be to sort of incorporate the ability to have maintenance sheds how how that would work in terms of the game's coding if that makes sense i'm not a coder I have no idea how reasonable my demands are, <laughs> but I, I, like I say, I think it would be nice. It would be a nice thing to add because I always did it in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and this is the first you know time in Planet Coaster I've tried doing it, but the first two Planet Coaster series, the first one was just one, it was just one video, so I didn't want to make spend too much time doing very detailed things because I was conscious that everything had to fit nicely into an 18-minute video. Uh, well, I didn't know it was going to be 18 minutes at the time, but I knew it was going to be about you know, 20 minutes to half an hour. Um, and then my second park, I was just still kind of experimenting with scenery. I wanted the scenery to be the focus and I was still trying to learn how to play the game properly. So, you know, part of that was apathy on my part. I will be the first to admit. But this time we're going full steam ahead in, you know, putting effort into the park. And, you know, safety is a big big concern here because you'd be building a fence here. I mean, I'll take a little bit of liberty. Like, I don't think we need the full height fences because it should be fairly obvious that you're not you're not supposed to be going into this area of the ride. You will be met with a, a sticky end, probably, if you end up scaling the side of the coaster. So the fence is more there just to tell people, look, don't be an idiot, don't go in here. And I feel like that's actually true for a lot of theme parks. They don't have very big fences because generally humans have a sense of self-preservation and uh, breaking into the, uh, the, gr- the grounds of a hurtling train riding around on a very unpredictable well, I guess it's a very predictable track by nature. It is literally on rails, but I'm getting off topic here. Humans can tell when it's not going to be a good idea for them, by and large. And, you know, maybe it's just survival of the fittest if they do. But <laughs> You can see me here. I didn't mention this as I was building it, but uh, this is me attempting to build a plaza uh, around the ride, and I couldn't quite figure out a good one. So eventually I just used the grid, the path grid system, to just make a big square that, like I like I mentioned earlier, one of my biggest gripes with Planet Coaster is the path system. It's going to be a recurring theme in every episode, I imagine, in Crimson Tower. Because by golly, they don't deserve me letting them up, letting them off. It's it's terrible. It's terrible. But they ended up turning out quite nice here. So I'm kind of building these sort of fake transfer track elements here, just as kind of I'd imagine that set of track there would slide across on these rails and then connect to the uh, transfer track on the connecting it to the service shed. And that's just how we get trains to and from the main track to the service shed. I think it ended up looking quite nice. I didn't really feel like I needed to overbuild it or anything. Um, but yeah, no, I was quite happy with how this came out. I'm oh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I was miles away for a second. I just had this, I had this thought, and then it just it vanished. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series, by the way. Like I say, the most of the park is done. But I haven't finished building the park yet. So if you do have any suggestions or kind of theme choices or anything like that about what you want to see in this park, do let me know. Uh, not Kerbal Space Program, though. Um, I, I would like to do a, a Kerbal Space Program build in Planet Coaster at some point. But I kind of like it to be kind of the centerpiece of the park or, you know, the, the centerpiece of this park is the big Crimson Tower and the generic kind of scenery. Like, we are going to be building a sci-fi area later on, but it's more generic sci-fi. It's not... I feel like I don't want to... I kind of want to do Kerbal Space Program justice. I want to have a bit more experience in the game building parks and obviously making YouTube videos of it to hear you guys' feedback before I embark on something so close to my heart. And I'm sure (laughs) most of you guys' hearts as well. So, you know, if you have suggestions for a Kerbal world or kind of space rides, then I'm all ears. But uh, I'm not going to be building it in Crimson Tower probably because I, I, I want to do that. I want to do that justice if I end up going down the Kerbal route. So... Some of you may be wondering at this point what I'm building here, and it is the photo booth. This would be kind of something nice that I didn't, I could never really understand why 
it was ne- it wasn't part of roller coaster tycoon well no this is this is planet coaster not roller coaster tycoon well i've never even played that game but roller coaster tycoon 3 and all the previous roller coaster tycoons i, I think one did uh, they you could have a on-ride photo section much like in real life uh, you can't do that in Planet Coaster, but we're going to just pretend and make a photo thing here. So you can have your, your photo gets taken on the ride, and then you can buy the photograph here for an exorbitant price. Um, these are just information booths. So I guess peeps would like guests would go up and interact with the desks, although it is purely cosmetic. I thought about adding a, a booth using the TV screens and making it look all nice, but I can't really be bothered, to be honest. So we're just uh, building a little archway to signify the entrance to the roller coaster. I played around with a few different things, but in the end I thought it looked kind of nice if we made our own custom archway using the rocks. I guess actually I've just abandoned building the archway and we're now replacing random bits of scenery. So spoiler alert, we're going to make the archway out of rocks. I've kind of, in case you could tell this wasn't a live commentary, uh, truth be told I haven't, this hasn't been a, a, a real time video. This has all been sped up in time lapse. Hard to believe I know. I, I, I do work pretty fast. I do love me a good um, you know, pack of Red Bull, but even I cannot build uh, this this fast. So, so yeah, just stalling to see if we actually get, if we ever get around to building the archway <laughs> to mark the entrance. But uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this ride. Don't worry, fear not, fear not. There will be a POV at the end of this video, so you can experience the ride in all its finished glory. But that's pretty much it, actually. So I didn't, in case you couldn't tell, this is going to be kind of a Western sort of area. It's not kind of very, very detailed scenery. It's more like kind of the park couldn't quite afford to go all out on the scenery. So it's going to be quite basic, generic looking Western scenery. Something you might see at an actual theme park, but not quite to the same caliber as Disney. I don't know. Part of it was laziness, but part of it also was because I do kind of appreciate the simpler scenery sometimes. The parks that I've been to and really like are things like Alton Towers. Um, places like that and all towers does have theming but it's not it's not it's nowhere near to the same kind of you know magnitude that the disney parks are so and i really like six flags as well and that again is quite minimalist scenery as well so you know that's kind of why i went with very basic scenery although in the sci-fi area of this park spoiler alert i do go quite all out of the scenery. anyway i'm gonna shut up now and let you enjoy the enjoy the pov go sorry just clear my throat a good youtuber might have edited that clearing my throat out now but this is kind of this is real talk you know this is real talk with matt mm. anyway hope you enjoyed <laughs> hope you enjoyed this series this series it's all over now guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you are interested in seeing the rest of the series there is a link to the playlist on screen now uh, as well as a link to the previous episode and the next episode if and when it's out, which uh, statistically it isn't out when most of you watch this. So I hope you enjoyed. And as always, Twitter, Patreon and Discord are all in the description for your, your clicking pleasure.